Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like to begin with a little story, uh, and it may be familiar to some of you already, but uh, it goes along with the Gospel reading for today. It's another story about uh, Jesus, Jesus walking on the water. Uh, this, this story is not recorded in the Gospels, uh, so like I say, you may or may not have heard of it before, but uh, one day uh, things were kind of slow, and so uh, Jesus and St. Peter thought they'd go out and play around the golf. And as they got on the golf course, and after about well, maybe three or four holes, whatever it was, uh, they both teed off, <clears throat> and they both landed about the same distance uh, on, on the fairway. <clears throat> and um, uh, Peter, St. Peter, was a little bit, a couple of feet behind Jesus' ball, so uh, he had honors, and he went first. And so uh, Peter walks over to his bag and pulls out his five iron, and the thing about this hole, uh, there was then a, a, a pond, a pretty large pond, between where they were and pretty near the green. And so anyway, uh, Peter gets out his, his five iron and takes a swing and gets a really good shot, a really good five iron shot, you know, up in the air, long, clears the pond, lands on the front edge of the green and rolls up to about uh, 10 feet, uh, 10 feet from the pin, from the hole. Okay, so then Jesus goes to his bag and he pulls out his seven iron. And uh, Peter says to him, Lord, you know, I know you're the son of God, but you know, that's really not enough club. And Jesus says to him, well, that's what Tiger Woods would use. And so Jesus gets up there and he swings and again, really, really a good shot with a seven iron. But it falls short and lands right in the pond. And so it's a friendly game. <clears throat> and so Peter says, well, Lord, go ahead and you know, take, take another shot. So uh, Jesus puts another ball down, um, keeps a seven iron. And Peter, again, feeling a little uncomfortable, says, yeah, Lord, you know, as, as you can see, that really wasn't enough club, you know, your seven iron. Uh, Jesus says, well, that's what Tiger Woods would use. And so Jesus takes another swing. Again, beautiful shot. Uh, beautiful seven, seven iron shot, but again, falls short, lands right into the pond. And again, uh, Peter was saying, uh, you know, we're, uh, the force from behind us are kind of pushing us a little bit, so uh, go ahead, take another shot, but then we need to get going. And so Jesus puts down another ball, uses a seven iron, beautiful seven iron shot, but again, right in the pond. And so Jesus says, okay, uh, they're, they're pushing us. I don't want to hold up time. We better get going. And so uh, he says, I'm going to go get my balls. And so Jesus goes to the pond, starts walking on the pond, out to go get his golf balls. The force of behind us, one of the guys says to him, who does that guy think he is, Jesus Christ? Peter says, nah, he thinks he's Tiger Woods. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, you won't find that in the scriptures. Um, but uh, anyway... Um, I thought it fit, and I couldn't resist telling it. Anyway, today's text, uh, where Jesus really does walk on the water. Uh, this event that Matthew records, that's our gospel lesson for today, uh, is also recorded in both Mark and John. Uh, this the same, same event. In all three, uh, the, the gospel writers record that this event took place immediately after Jesus fed the 5,000. And then they also will note that uh, this took place during the fourth watch of the night. That's like from uh, 3 to 6, 6 a.m. And again, in all three uh, instances, they record that as Jesus came near uh, to them, to the boat, uh, they cried out, it's a ghost. Okay. Um, and again, they all, all three record that uh, after the exchange with Peter, uh, Jesus and Peter get into the boat and and the waters calm. Now Matthew also records, and he's the only one who does this, records an earlier occasion where Jesus calms a storm at sea. In this one, he doesn't actually walk on the water, but he, is, he and the disciples are, are in the boat and they're trying to go across, uh, across the sea, the Sea of Galilee. And, uh, the, and then Matthew tells us in this case 
uh, there was a real storm and the boat was being swamped. So the waves were, were coming over the boat um, and there was some real danger there. But then again, maybe you recall that Jesus, he was asleep through all of this. And so the disciples, they're all scared. They go wake up Jesus and say, you know, Lord, don't you care that we're about to drown? And, and uh, Jesus, you know, again, then calms the sea and takes care of things. The disciples' reaction in that event, that earlier event, is after Jesus had calmed that, calmed the sea, what did these disciples say? What sort of man is this? Okay, that was their question. That was their response. Uh, however, in today, this event that we, uh, is our gospel lesson for today, after uh, Jesus was walking on the water and then got into the boat and things calmed down, our text tells us in the last verse, and those in the boat worshiped him saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. So there's some progression here, you see. In that earlier event, you know, they weren't quite sure uh, who, who this was. You know, what sort of man? Like, they knew it was Jesus, uh, but you know, what sort of man is this? They weren't quite sure. Again, it's a sense of puzzlement. But in later, this one today, which occurred later, in this event, finally they make this, uh, this confession. Huh? They make this confession truly uh, you are the Son of God. Now, <clears throat> another common element between both of these events is that Jesus said to them, Oh, you of little faith. The earlier event, uh, the one where Jesus was asleep in the boat and all of that, uh, he said to the disciples, to all of them, Oh, you of little faith. Because they were all afraid, they all went and woke up Jesus. But in this later event, the one that's our gospel reading for today, Jesus addresses those words only to Peter. Oh, you of little faith. Now, I guess we're not quite sure whether uh, in this instance, Peter was kind of representative of all the rest of the disciples, as he often is you know, uh, throughout the gospels, and sort of a spokesman. But anyway, the point is, is that in this case, Jesus spoke to Peter only, you know, and said, oh, you, of little faith. Again, Matthew tells us in today's Gospels, but when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it is a ghost, and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Lord, if it's you. Again, Peter wasn't so sure. He said, I let him show me a sign. Give me some proof that it really is you. And if you want to give me proof, tell me to come walking out toward you. And then the very next verse. When, but when Peter saw the wind, he was afraid and began, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why, why did you doubt? So Jesus came to the boat and said, Come on, Peter, come on out. And he came and was probably standing pretty close to Jesus, probably right next to him, because Matthew says that he could just reach out his hand and take him. So there was Peter, probably didn't have to go too far from the boat, but he was on the water, and he got right next to Jesus, okay? Then it said, Peter, uh, Matthew tells us, then he looked at the wind and saw what the wind was doing. And that's when he became afraid and started to sink. And, oh, you of little faith, after Jesus pulls him up by the hand. Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? What did Peter doubt? It seemed like they, he shouldn't have had any doubts at all because uh, right after uh, Jesus' baptism and temptation uh, in, in the wilderness for 40 days, uh, is that's when uh, Peter came and called and found you know, the, the fishermen, Peter and his brother Andrew, and called them to follow him. And then they went on a little ways further and found James and his brother John and called them to follow him as well. So this is very early in Jesus' public ministry when Peter was called to be a disciple. The rest of them were called 
a little bit later. But after, G after Peter was called to be a disciple, between that time and the event that's in today's gospel reading, Peter had heard a lot from Jesus. Peter had heard the Sermon on the Mount and some other teachings, uh, Matthew tells us. Peter had also, by the time we get to this event in the gospel reading today, had witnessed, you know, visibly witnessed, and by my quick account, uh, there were 12 specific miracles that he had witnessed Jesus do. Several of them were uh, miracles of healing. Uh, others were, uh, the other time when he was in the boat, the, the calming of the storm, he had witnessed Jesus perform some exorcisms, casting demons out, out of people. Um, he also witnessed Jesus restoring, uh, one, one text says a, girl, a little girl was dead, another one says uh, the girl was dying. But anyway, saw Jesus restore this little girl to life. And again, he had witnessed the feeding of the 5,000. Plus, again, Matthew tells us there were plenty of other teachings that he had heard uh, Jesus give, as well as many parables. So it seems by this time that Peter uh, should have had much faith, not little, and he'd seen and heard a lot. I mean, how could he not believe? You know? And it, it's still, again, today's text, if it is you, Lord, okay? It seems like at this time Peter should have had, you know, a strong faith. Now, it's obviously important to recognize that what Jesus said to him, oh, you have little faith. Jesus did not say Peter had no faith. See? Not at all. Okay? You have little faith. And maybe by that he meant you know, a faith that's growing, maybe a faith that's developing. But he, was, he had faith. Uh, faith even though it was little. And then there was a time when, you know, much later, toward the end of Jesus' ministry, uh, when word was going around about Jesus, and Jesus said to his disciples, you know, who do people say that I am? And they gave, you know, the answer to several of them, maybe uh, the prophet Elijah, maybe one of the other prophets, maybe John the Baptist, uh, come back from the dead. And then Jesus said, okay, but who do you say that I am? And Peter, again, spokesman for the rest probably, but Peter is the one who said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. So finally, Peter came to the point where he had more than just a little faith. He had a strong faith. You are, we know this, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. But as we all know, a little bit after that, Peter had a relapse of faith. Denied knowing Jesus three times, huh? Again, so it seemed like Peter's faith up and down, up and down. Sometimes it was strong and bold. Other times it was little faith, little faith. And so Peter's faith didn't become rock solid. Remember Peter, given that name Peter meaning rock, Petrus. Didn't become a rock solid faith. And, and not only just Peter, but the other disciples as well, <clears throat> until they had encountered the resurrected Jesus. Now that's finally when their faith became and apparently lasted strong. Now the good news in this text for us, I believe, is that <clears throat> Jesus reached out and rescued little faith Peter. Even though his faith was little at that time, wavering, he reached out and he rescued him. We talk about doubting Thomas. Well, there was a doubting Peter here, huh? Oh, you have little faith. Why, why did you doubt? But again, Jesus reached out and saved him. And this whole thing that Jesus reaching out and rescuing and saving uh, little faith Peter kind of shoots a hole, you know, in the assertion from some of these, I don't know, prosperity preachers or whatever, who say, you know, things are going badly in your life, uh, God is not answering your prayers because your faith isn't strong enough. You know, we can put that all aside. Usually they say, you know, if you really want to prove your faith, 
you know, send me 20 bucks and, you know, find an answer to your prayers and that sort of thing. You know, just ignore all of that business. Jesus rescued, saved, little faith, Peter. And this is all good news for us. <clears throat> because our faith, mine I know from time to time, probably yours as well, is like Peter's faith. Sometimes it seems like our faith is a work in progress. You know, it's growing, 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 and then maybe it takes a dip, you know, it starts growing, growing, growing again, takes another dip from time to time. And so, like Peter, even when we are standing right next to Jesus, right next to him, as, as Peter apparently was, even when, you know, we're you know, really in tune with our Lord and with our faith and it's strong, even then, sometimes we shift our focus away from Jesus. Even though we're right there next to him. Even though our faith is strong. We shift our focus away from him and do what Peter did, look at the wind and what it was doing to them at that time. And that wind for us can be any of the fearful or threatening circumstances in which we find ourselves from time to time. We have wind as well. And we can be fearful and we can be doubting and we can wonder what is going on with us. And we too, like Peter, and under those circumstances, whatever they might happen to be for you in your life, whatever they might happen to be, we too can have a faith relapse. Our faith, sometimes our trust in Jesus' presence and his promises may revert to little faith, little trust. And maybe it can even revert sometimes to doubt over Jesus' readiness to help and to save us. Help and to save us no matter what those circumstances are. But little though our faith may be from time to time, little though our faith may be when the wind is howling around us and creating all kinds of problems and issues and, and fearful things, even then, at that moment, we still have, like Peter, still do have faith. Faith enough to, like Peter, cry out, Lord, save me. If we had no faith, we wouldn't even bother to cry out. But there was enough faith in Peter, and at those times, there's certainly enough faith that we have as well. That we know that Jesus is there, and we can at least cry out, even in our little faith, even with our doubts, Lord, save me. And Jesus will, as he did with Peter, reach out and take hold of us. Rescue us, save us. Maybe not change the circumstance, but reach out to save us, to rescue us, to strengthen our faith so that it does become strong even as we encounter the wind, whatever that happens to be, the circumstances in our life that are not good. He reaches out and rescues us and strengthens our faith so that we might, you know, make it through those difficult times. And this promise of Jesus, this event that, that we hear today, that, that the fact that Jesus reaches out and, and, and takes us and, and rescues us, this extends even and probably most importantly to any doubt that we may have regarding God's willingness or even God's eagerness to forgive some particular sin in our life. Maybe it's one particular thing that we said, boy, you know, I really messed up there. And I'm not sure God is able or willing to forgive that. Or maybe we might have doubt as to whether God is ready and willing to forgive, maybe not some major sin that really bothers and burdens and troubles us, but that he will forgive all those repeated sins 
that we commit over and over and over again. Same thing, the same sin we repent of and go right back and do again and again and again. And we may doubt, you know, Lord, you know, how, how can you forgive someone like me who c confesses my faith in you but I keep on doing the same sin or sins over and over again? We may doubt that God is willing and eager to forgive that sin or those sins for the sake of his son, Jesus. We may doubt that. We go back to the text. But when Peter saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him. Like Peter, he does the same for us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now may the peace and the power of God, which passes all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, now and always. Amen.